Hey everyone, I'm Coral. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here with another drinky Nightworms um, packaging. Um, today I'm drinking a beer that I saved especially for this occasion because I wanted to tell you all about it because I liked it so much. This is called Sea Quench Ale. Um, it's a session sour. It's by Dogfish Head, which um, I drink on occasion. They have good IPAs, but I really love sours. And this one is very limey and salty, and it's so good. Mm. It's just like, has a really nice, like fresh lime taste, like not artificial lime, like, you know, if you're drinking a Coke with lime, but like a really tart lime flavor and it's salty and it's delicious. Okay, so I have my Nightmare package here. And if I'm remembering right, and I hope I am because I purposely didn't buy two of the books. I think there might be three this month, but I purposely didn't buy two of the books that I was planning on buying this month because I'm pretty sure they're in here. So I'm hoping that they are. Let's see. So here she is. Let's open her up. I see three books. We do have three books this month. Oh my gosh, this is wild. I literally just almost pre-ordered this third one too. I like put it in my checkout and then I got distracted. <laughs> wow, what a great month. Okay, so we have Whisper Down the Lane by Clay McLeod Cha Chapman. I always want to say Chaplin for some reason. We have Scanlines by Todd Kissling. This is the one that I almost pre-ordered because it just went up today. I'm pretty sure I saw um, the publisher, Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing, post about it on Twitter and I was like, I think I should pre-order that and then I didn't. My cat's trying to eat this bag because he loves to chew plastic. And the other one I purposely didn't buy this month because I'm pretty sure it was going to be in this box and it was Goddess of Filth by V. Castro. Oh my effing g okay so i like to read the synopsis of these i know some people myself in particular don't usually read synopsis because sometimes they can give a little bit too much away so if you're one of those people i will hold the book up again once i'm done reading the synopsis if you'd like to skip over that part but if you'd like to hear the synopsis i'm going to read it to you Richard doesn't have a past. For him, there's only the present. A new marriage to Tamara, a first chance at fatherhood to her son Elijah, and a quiet but pleasant life as an art teacher at Elijah's elementary school in Danvers, Virginia. Then the body of a rabbit, ritualistically murdered, appears on the school grounds with a birthday card for Richard tucked beneath it. Richard doesn't have a birthday, but Sean does. Sean is a five-year-old boy who just moved to Greenfield, Virginia with his mother. Like most mothers of the 1980s, she's worried about bills, childcare, putting food on the table, and an encroaching threat to the American life that can take the face of anyone, a politician, a friendly neighbor, or even a teacher. When Sean's school sends a letter to parents revealing that Sean's favorite teacher is under investigation, a white lie from Sean lights a fire that engulfs the entire nation, and Sean and his mother are left holding the match. Now, 30 years later, someone is here to remind Richard that they remember what Sean did, and though Sean doesn't exist anymore, someone needs to pay the price for his lies. And I already have kind of a theory about this. I'm not gonna share it because I don't wanna be a spoiler, <laughs> but I'm really excited about this. Um, it sounds like the perfect satanic panic type of thing. Um, I remember reading that this is based on the McMartin's preschool mishap where a um, concerned mother noticed a rash on her child's bottom and it kind of turned into this snowball effect where she accused the preschool of molesting her daughter and then a bunch of other parents accused the preschool of their children being molested by the teachers there and just like this whole crazy thing turns out none of it was real and it wrecked these people's lives like you know the people who were accused um and it's just a really crazy story so that's also an interesting thing to check out um and also 
whisper down the lane. I'm so excited about this. Okay, so next year, Goddess of Filth by V. Castro. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this one too. One hot summer night, best friends Lourdes, Fernanda, Anna, Perla, and Pauline hold a seance. It's all fun and games at first, but their tipsy laughter turns to terror when the flames burn straight through their prayer candles and Fernanda starts crawling towards her friends and chanting in Nahadl, the language of their Aztec ancestors. You know what? I read this earlier this month, this synopsis on my channel, and I didn't look up how to pronounce Nahadl, Nahodl. Hmm. Excuse my pronunciation. Over the next few weeks, shy, modest Fernanda starts acting strangely, smearing herself in black makeup, shredding her hands on rose thorns, sucking sin out of the mouths of the guilty. The local priest is convinced it's a demon, but Lourdes begins to suspect it's something else, something far more ancient and powerful. How? Oh, this sounds like so much fun. Um, this is a little bit shorter than I expected too, which I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Hopefully you get, it's like short and sweet and to the point. Oh my gosh, look at the spine. I don't know if it's picking up well, but it's like um, a back, a spine, vertebrae. Very cool. And a pelvis, I guess. This is published by Creature Publishing, by the way. And Whispered Down the Lane is published by Quirk. So last but not least here is Scan Lines by Todd Kisling. Um, this one's published by Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing. In 1987, Congressman Benjamin Hardy III died by suicide on live television amidst accusations of political corruption. Years later, rumors of a recording surfaced among VHS trading groups and urban legend chat rooms. Dubbed the Duncan Tape after the deceased cameraman who attempted to sell the video, the rumors allege that anyone who watches the tape is driven to suicide very creepy or so the story goes in truth no one has ever seen the supposed duncan tape presumably because it doesn't exist it's a ghost story perpetuated on the forums and chat rooms of the internet another handful of bites scattered through the information superhighway at blistering 57k modem speeds for Robbie and his friends, an urban legend is the last thing on their minds when a boring Friday night presents a chance to download porn. But the short clip they watch turns out to be something far more graphic and disturbing. And in the coming days, they'll learn even the most outlandish urban legends possess a shred of truth. Okay, so the reason I almost picked this up today, like I, it's probably still in my cart on PMMP's website. But the reason I almost picked this up today is because someone said it was the bleakest coming of age novella ever. <laughs> it's like, hello. And um, so yeah, I mean, this sounds like, um, I don't know if any of you listened to the podcast series Black Tapes. It was kind of like, um, one of those podcasts where it's fictional and they have a storyline and it was really fun um for most of it it was pretty creepy not like super scary but i enjoyed it um and this whole like um you know vhs tape that causes people to die you know kind of sounds like that and also the part about the congressman killing himself on live tv there's somebody who did that and they weren't a congressman. I feel like they were just like a member of some sort of board. R. Bud Dwyer, that's who it was. Um, who was he though? He was a politician, I know that. It's really sad um, if you haven't seen it. Maybe you shouldn't because it's sad. Um, I have not seen the tape, but I have heard audio from the tape and it's very disturbing. But that's what that reminds me of, I guess, that's the point. So here is the goodie bag. There is a cute sticker on here, but um, I ripped it already. Oops. Okay, so first of all, there is another thing of Pioneer Joe's Coffee Co. Pacific Northwest Trailblazing Favorite. This is a Nightworms Kona blend. And you know, these kind of go to waste on me because I really like a much stronger cup of coffee than this makes. But I mean, it's a cool thing. It's like a little, 
It makes one cup of coffee. It's like a little tent that you put over the edge of your cup. It like folds out and there's like little legs that stick on the outside and then you pour your hot water through the grounds. Um, soda is really cool. It just does not make a strong cup of coffee and I need a strong cup of coffee. Oh, okay. So there is this very cool pentagram sticker, kind of uh, pagan looking with the sticks and the twigs. A picture of a coffin that says dead inside. Some signed book plates here. This one looks like Todd Kisling. And I'm assuming this is Clay McLeod Chapman because those are his initials. I like the border on that one. Very adorable for, um, this actually seems very um, perfect for how Quirk does its little goodies like that. It's like pentagrams and um, alphabet blocks. <laughs> Shit like that, very funny. Ooh, there is this cool, spine bookmark that matches the spine of oh it's a spine on the spine you guys it's a spine on the spine look okay on the back of it it says expanding the scope of what horror can be and who can make it very cool creature publishing um there's also the inksmith bookmark for this month um uh, the theme was we are the weirdos which is, you know, a little play on The Craft, the horror movie The Craft. Cool, there is a nice coupon for Maddie Page Draws, who does stickers, it looks like. What stickers did she do? Okay, she did the Dead Inside sticker. Um, the Pentagram sticker is by Pacific Coast Decals, so um, I'm wondering maybe the Nightworms people designed that? Anyways, what a great package this month. So to wrap it up here, this month we got Whisper Down the Lane by Clay McLeod Chapman. We got Scan Lines by Todd Keesling and Goddess of Filth by V Castro. Holy cow. What a way to start April. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Let me know if you've read any of these three books um because i do believe that scan lines this is like a reprinting of it if i'm remembering correctly um from what i kind of gathered from the internet when i was looking at the announcement of this print let me know if you've read that let me know if you've had the chance to read goddess of filth or whisper down the lane i'd love to hear spoiler free of course but i'd love to hear what you thought about them if you picked them up wh or what you thought about this nightworms package or whether you like this coffee or not is this strong enough for you or am i just a freak i don't know let me know thank you guys so much for watching i will see you later goodbye